Well, moving on to the next speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Our next speaker is uh, Anitha Skaria George. Well, she's the Vice President, India COE, and Country Leader at uh, Silonis, a dynamic and a seasoned tech professional with almost three decades of experience. Anitha George is recognized as an integral part of Silonis in India. She carries almost, as I said, three decades of experience in technology and service industry. She brings an enviable blend of sharp business acumen, reliable market knowledge, and robust tech competencies to her role as Vice President of India COE and Country Leader at Silonis. She is responsible for collaborating with global leaders of the firm and growing the software service for clients' products, solutions, and services. With a huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anitha Sarvesh on the stage. Now, Salonis has 
a very interesting origin. We started as, uh, you know, uh, out evolved out of a university project done by three founders. We had to do an internship uh, at the uh, very broadcasting operation. So they were given this uh, piles of data, you know, uh, from a printer, uh, uh, you know, usage of a printer, and they said, uh, like, you, know, you have to solve this problem for us. We have a good problem, you know, with our printing. And um, so when the founders looked at the data, uh, you know, they said, what do we do with this? I mean, we can't make any sense out of it. And it will take us ages to get through all of this data. And uh, they came across a paper which was, uh, uh, you know, published by a professor in the IU in university. And this was a paper on process mining. So we talked about uh, using the process information, extracting process information. I talked about algorithms, you know, which can analyze process information, create a process map. And uh, all of this, uh, you know, done programmatically, you can crunch large volumes of data and give you insights. And uh, so they use this technology to, do, uh, you know, to resolve this problem. And they realize this huge business opportunity. And that was the birth of service. So today, where are we? We're at 2,700 employees worldwide. We've got about 2,500 customers, and these are all the large, you know, Fortune 2,000 customers. We're growing 100% year on year for the past two years. Okay? We're the market leaders in this category called process mining that we created. Today, uh, you know, last year in June, uh, we got a $1 billion funding from our investors. And today, we've evaluated at $11 billion. We have a huge, vibrant ecosystem. All the large size partners, we partner with all of them. We work with a number of BPOs, large BPOs too. So, you know, why, why do we exist? You know, why are we here? If you look at, you know, the IT stack that any BPO has today, or any company has today, large companies, uh, you would see large systems of record. Okay? And systems of record are your ERP systems, and all your transactions are record. Okay? Now, uh, you know, there's always this concept of uh, best of being, I want the best HR system, I want the best financial system. So what you land up is you get a lot of disparate systems. And sometimes you build your own systems as well, you know, to augment that. And finally, what happens is your data is spread across these multiple systems. So then what you, what you do, you go and get a data warehouse. Okay? Now above all of this, to really use this data, you come up with this, you know, analytics here. You have business intelligence. And then you realize, you know, processes are running across multiple systems. I need, you know, something more integrated. So you have RPA, uh, you have, uh, you know, VPN uh, uh, software, a VPN tool, uh, you have integration, you know, which integrates to ensure that, you know, there is sanctity of your data to integrate. And uh, there's also, you know, the thing of uh, every department comes and says, you know, I want something that works for me. You know, I want the credit department says, I want something that works for me. So mm -hmm. give me, a, you know, a software that has all the AI and everything, I just want to use that. And you have on solutions like, for hiring this company. Okay? So in the end, what do you have? You have this whole myriad of systems. Okay? But what does it you know, lead to? You can't see your process end to end. There's no brain to coordinate the process. Who's controlling all of this? Okay? And it's hard and expensive to unlock value. What if somebody comes and tells you, oh, you know, I want to see the thing, you then implement all of this. So there's the value. How are you improving things for me? very difficult when you have a landscape like this. Okay. And that's why we built Arcelor's execution analysis. So what is the execution analysis? It sits in the heart of all of this. Okay. So it takes data feeds real time from all your systems, okay, all your record keeping systems like an SAP, Salesforce, real time data spread it was a lot of data part. The intelligent comes from intelligence. We have algorithms that run on it, you know, get your intelligence, and we also have the action. So it suggests what actions need to be taken. Okay? And because you can see your process end to end, you know exactly what you want. Gives you a complete 360 degree view of your processes. It's like giving a brain to your process. So imagine if you had a process, a procure to pay process, you know, you just set it running, it looks at, you know, how the you know, system is playing, how the data is being and learns from experiential learning and is able to execute optimally on its own. That is what you call scale. Okay? And we're able to measure how the process is running, where are things going wrong, and we can actually measure what is the value of the cost that the customer is saving. 
So Nissan can now start narrowing down the investigation to the auto management process specifically in the US. She is presented with this view which we call the digital twin or the real-time X-ray of the auto management process. Which Celotis has identified as pre-constructed right from the base transactional systems that are already lying in the source systems. By default, we are seeing in the most common path all the way from auto creation to image clearance. But as we start to expand, Celotis shows what's under the hood. What else is happening? And starts to uncover some of the challenges in the process. One of the most common deviations, as you can see, is a 20, up to 28% of the cases, causing eight days of an increase in the cycle time. As we include every path the sales order to take, we can start seeing what we affectionately call as a spaghetti diagram. <laughs> and that shows the real complexity of the business that is underlying her process. With this, she can get in her fingertips all the entire full picture and she can then start digging deeper to find out what the root causes are. And here is where Solonis comes in again. Solonis can untangle this complexity by diagnosing the who, what, where, when and why of these deviations and automatically prioritize them by impact in real time. The system has identified four inefficiencies as you can see by analyzing millions of data points that are sitting in the company's source systems. The top inefficiency in this particular case is Late delivery is due to delivery blocks, occurring in 150,000 sales orders, causing an opening impact of $6.5 million. But we've got to go one step deeper, right? We are still on this. All the insights into the inefficiencies are at her fingertips, giving her an impact analysis to assess the magnitude of the issue. She can start seeing what is the root cause analysis. On the left, she is able to see that the late orders are causing an enormous financial impact. It's affecting 340 million cases. On the right, you can start seeing the root causes. The 340 million sales orders that are, that are getting impacted, risk discounts and, and late priorities causing the financial impact. Right? On the right side, it is already showing her what is the most common root cause for this delivery bar. Large order volumes. No pain over there, because large volumes probably drive stock outs and they trigger these blocks. Removing these blocks, can solve the problem, but it is time consuming and very highly manual because specialists will need to go through order demand, production capacity, customer priority, maybe all of them sitting in multiple SA, PCR, and even Excel sheets, which are used to prioritize orders and allocate these limited products. But let's take a step back here. We went from finding low performing metrics to understanding the root causes behind them, all in a couple of clicks. Can you imagine this? All of this is made possible by the powerful process mining engine that is working behind the scenes to automatically surface these inefficiencies, the hidden inefficiencies. These are clearly costing the company, but taking the action can you know, be difficult to do a scale. Is the solution that would be better than the problem? Again, Celonis can come in and help. We call this the EMS, or the execution management system, which integrates the required data and automatically triggers workflows to allocate these limited products in the prioritized way. Action flows use machine learning, we heard in the last session, to analyze each new sales order in real time and identify the potential rate deliveries to automatically resolve them. The smart sensor, the first box, is this, you know, it looks at block orders, matches them to priority levels, triggers the standard priority, just pushes it, pushes the delivery date and informs the customer proactively. But if it's a high priority, it puts a human in the loop, if you will. And then you know uses the service uh, customer service lead as a preemptive notification. With this smart logic, order management teams can now focus on activities where their attention is really required. Here, for example, by getting the approval to remove delivery blocks and confirming delivery dates for the high priority customers, it just makes it easier for the customer service executor. Now let's check out how a customer service team lead you know will start this will start his day. So when, he, when, when Robert, for example, you know, starts his shift, what he sees is, when he, and he logs into Salon, he sees a dashboard, where all his open orders are listed for him, ranked by urgency. In the past, Robert's work, he looked at everyone else's, a combination of first in, first out, a constant pilot will lead to inefficient approach to prioritizing orders. Things have changed for Salon. Robert is now starting his day with a prioritized list of items that require his attention. He, he is able to look at the open orders and see where the inefficiencies are. Some require his immediate attention, while others are automatically solved for him. 
Today he looks at desktop inefficiency, which is locked orders due to large volumes. He gets immediately, by a click of a button, prioritized customer orders that need to be dispatched immediately. He selects all the orders in this list and removes the delivery box for immediate expedited. All of this without having to leave Salonis for one bit and just with a click of a button. Through this radical prioritization, he is confident that he is actually working towards what Jane set up as priority, which is the one-time full rate. This is the true power of real-time data-driven execution. Let's recap. We went from how Jane was able to use an equivalent real-time view to get customer satisfaction index. Then we looked at Lisa who created you know, a root cause analysis, set of action flows in order to take, tackle these inefficiencies in the future. And finally, we saw Robert who always worked on the most relevant activity to get the KPI back on track. Let's fast forward three months. And you know, all good stories end well. Jane looks at this uh, dashboard three months later, she sees the on-time input rate has gone up from 70 to 90. Also got a promotion in bargain. Salonis execution management system has really helped Jane and million others to drive customer satisfaction. And other KPIs by acting as transformational platform that can uncover these inefficiencies in real time and act on them through automation. With that, the bell goes back on. Over to uh, Anita for closing remarks. So, we saw Salonis uh, in action. Now, this is the power that comes into our hands when you can make decisions on all of the information that you have available. Okay? Now, what you see on the screen behind me is uh, you know, some of the initiatives that most companies are running today operational excellence digital transformation, merger acquisition, no matter services, BPO, intelligent process, automation. Now, if you are embarking on any of these journeys, you do call us at Sabonis. Because we will make this journey way more easier for you. And this is a team at Sabonis that you can call. This is a team over here. So I'd just like to quickly introduce Shivani. Shivani, just stand up. Abhijit Roy, Shiva, Sakshi, and Manoj and myself. So about, uh, you know, 2010, uh, we had the uh, universe uh, in the world, we were dealing with about two zettabytes of data. Now one zettabyte is a number of stars in the universe. And to store one universe of data, one zero of data, you need 250 billion DBs. In 2020, that's become 64 zettabytes of data. Okay, so 64 universes of data that we have. In the next 10 years, it's going to be 680 zettabytes. So what can we achieve collecting all of this data? Even if you're able to use a minuscule of this data for doing your decisions, imagine the power that you have. That's the kind of power that we at Salonis can give to you. The new calls. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, uh, just can you hear me? Understand, are you a uh, complementary tool or a replacement tool for the AI product at Power BI? I think we disrupt the AI. I think we disrupt the AI. It is, we look at data in action, the data that's moving across the system. And this gives you a completely new perspective. You know, just today I take the example of ADB. Um, they had actually realized about $700 million of value from music salons. We have customers of salons for 24 years. Any question? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, so how does Salonis connect to those platforms? Uh, do you have an open API or how does it work? Yes. So what do we what do we have? So all the uh, you know today's ERD is any software that you're building is coming with open APIs. Right? We do build those open APIs. So we have connectors that we built to connect to most common data sources. So whatever use cases, all the common use cases that you see here, systems like SAP, SMBC, Oracle, we have connectors to that. Okay, and the connectors can be set up to get data in near real time into a data 
should I just add to what Anita said? Uh, we are currently, you know, having pre-built connectors for more than 30 plus source systems and with 80 plus, you know, such process connectors, which are readily available for you guys to use. Does it mean that uh, at a transactional level you need to have a uh, repetitive process only to get the best advantage of Cervonis? Uh, see, you get the advantage of Cervonis when you have a large volume of transactions. Okay, so 200,000 transactions a day, you know, 1,000 dollars a day. That's when you, know, you see the true power of the May not be similar. Yes, may not be similar. See, if it's, you know, 1,000 transactions, you know, like looking at our transactions, you can pinpoint exactly how it's flowing and you know what you need to correct even in those thousand transactions. But the impact is not as overwhelming. Okay, when you process large number of transactions, is when you see a bigger impact. That's when you lose control. You know, your brain cannot comprehend. If you have to do this, you know, manually, it would take you months to even go through this. <coughs> Last question. And, uh, what? Actually, I have two questions. What you don't do is the first question. What you don't do? I mean, you have a roadmap. That's the first one. Second is you mentioned about use cases. See, if I want to implement you for one of our largest customers, it may take 18 months, 9 months, whatever. I like the Apple phone, you know, because I just switch it on. I like the Apple phone because when I switch on, it gives me all the data. I figure the health data and it measures as I'm... So do you have... Does it work like that? Like it's switch on, it's already on time delivery. It used to have 732 million, if I remember the number. 732 deliveries versus on time. You removed it from you know, 70% to 90% is what I observed on the screen. So do you have an automatic thing where you just have a use case and just switch it on? I would love that. Thank you. I think the first one, what we don't do. What we don't, what we don't do, I don't know what she does, she's a company here. Um, but what we don't do, on uh, a more serious note, is we do not look at replacing a system of record. We are not, we are in the execution space. So we are not looking at you know, replacing any of the SAP oracles that are there. We are looking at playing in the system of transaction and in the system of innovation. The two hierarchy is, you know, as, as uh, I think Gartner very famously called it some years back. So th that's where we are. We, we were in the system of innovation. We are now percolating down to the system of transaction with a whole lot of automation, data ingestion capabilities that we have added. We want to be the go-to product when a uh, transaction, uh, you know, when a, when a BPO, uh, you know, team lead or a, or a analyst or an agent starts his shift. We want to be the execution plan. That's what we are. We are not the system of record. Yeah, we're, we're not here, you know, to replace anything that what we have. We're here to make it better and make you use it better. Uh, now the next question in terms of, uh, you know, is it kind of plug and play? Uh, we have applications, uh, you know, execution apps as we call it, uh, to cover some of the commonly used use cases that we have. Okay, and, and this is something that uh, we know the market needs. And uh, we can get started in as you know, four weeks you know, on, on any of these. But then we have a local local platform and uh, that would help you build apps for it. So there is a completely new use case where you have to design the data mart. Yes, that would take some implementation. Uh, but my experience has been that uh, it is way, way lesser time, uh, you know, uh, that, and your ROI, you get an ROI in as quickly as you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. May I please invite uh, Sonish Mitash, sir, to felicitate both of them. Thank you so much, Anita, ma'am. Thank you so much, Manav, sir, for this wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, sir. 
And to post that, we'll be having a panel discussion. We need two minutes for the setup. Meanwhile, I'd request the speakers uh, of the panel discussion on the second track to please proceed to the hall too.